With a second hard disk, mirroring can be set up quickly and easily in Windows. Mirroring the Windows partition is very easy, but not setting up the partition so that it is possible to boot from the second hard disk in the event of an error. Hello, and welcome, of course also to my website libe.net. A hard disk mirroring is a setup for simultaneous writing and reading on two hard disks, also called RAID 1. The contents of the two hard disks are identical at all times during a mirroring. If one hard disk should break, the data is available on the second disk, the computer continues to function and can also be started with the setup described here after the failure. I have inserted a second hard disk into the computer in advance. At the beginning we take a look at the disk management. The disk management starts with a dialog for initializing the new disk. I confirm GPT as partition table. For the creation of the partitions I put together a few PowerShell commands. But first we take a look at the existing partitions. The command get partition also shows us the hidden partitions. Besides PowerShell, the disk part command and the command prompt can also be used to manage the partitions. The goal is to transfer the partition layout to the new disk if possible. For disk mirroring, the disks must be converted to dynamic and it makes a difference at what time the disk is converted. If I convert the primary hard disk to dynamic, it gets an additional partition with the number 5. In order for our secondary disk to get the same partition numbers, we need to create the partitions and convert the disk to dynamic only after the creation. The mirror creates a partition by itself during the setup. To make sure that the partition with the number 3 is used for the mirroring, we have no other choice but to create a partition as a placeholder and delete it after converting to dynamic. The creation of the partitions can be done via disk part or PowerShell. For PowerShell, as already mentioned, I have compiled a few commands to make the creation easier and faster. All commands and additional information can be found on my website libe.net. The commands might need to be adjusted a bit in advance. The size of the C drive is read from the primary hard disk in the commands but as an example, the FE partition or the recovery partition might have a slightly different size. For the creation I copy the prepared commands into the PowerShell window and confirm the deletion of existing partitions and the last command with enter. If I compare the output of our disk 0 before I converted it to dynamic, the partition layout now is equal to our secondary disk. The next step is to convert the secondary disk to dynamic as well. If we check the partition layout, our second disk now also has a partition with the number 5 for the dynamic disk. Now we still lack a free space for the actual mirroring of the C drive. For this purpose I delete the placeholder partition created before. Now everything is ready for starting the mirroring. Now, in the background, all the data blocks of the C drive are transferred from the primary to the secondary disk. While the synchronization is running, we can fill the EFI partition and the recovery partition so that the PC can also boot from the secondary disk in case of an error. To access the EFI partition, we must first assign a drive letter for both partitions. After that, the contents can be transferred from one partition to the other. If you try the previously used get partition command in Windows PowerShell, you will find that a dynamic disk can no longer be managed with PowerShell. We can assign the drive letter again with the disk part command. Therefore I select the primary disk 0 and with the command select partition 1, the FE partition. 
Assign letter equals P assigns the drive letter for the FE partition of the primary disk. For the FE partition of the secondary disk I select the secondary disk with select disk 1 and again partition 1. Then the FE partition of the secondary disk still needs a file system, which can be created with the command format. Finally I assign the drive letter S to the partition. I exit disk part with exit and change to the P drive and to the FE Microsoft boot folder. The BCD store cannot be copied on the fly, so we have to export the store with BCD edit. Copying the files can be done with the robocopy command. The previously exported BCD store can be renamed back with rename. Our export on the primary disk is no longer needed and can be deleted. The assigned drive letters are no longer needed and can be released again via disk part. As a diligence task, the recovery partition on the secondary disk can also be filled. The procedure is similar to copying the EFI partition. I select the partition 4 in each case. For the recovery partition of the primary disk I assign again the drive letter, P. The recovery partition of the secondary disk needs again a file system and gets the drive letter, S. Again, we copy the contents from the primary disk's recovery partition to the secondary disk's recovery partition using the robocopy command. Finally, I remove the previously assigned drive letters again. When the synchronization is finished, the C partition has the status, healthy. All data is now available on both hard disks. No matter which hard disk fails now, the PC can use the data from the second hard disk and continues to function. For a demonstration, I remove the primary hard drive and restart the computer. It may be necessary to adjust the boot order of the hard drive so that the second hard drive starts. The computer should now boot into a recovery dialog. The F9 key allows the second hard drive to be selected for the boot process, listed as Windows 11 Secondary Plex. After the start, we take another look at the disk management. Our secondary disk has become disk 0 and the missing disk affects us with an error redundancy. If the removed disk remains permanently disconnected, we can remove the mirror. Disk management now looks something like we never mirrored the disk. To make the next boot work without F9 we can adjust the bootloader. For this I start disk part again and give the EFI partition a drive letter, this time, Y. I change to the path FE boot and let the command BCD boot recreate the boot entry. The Y drive should be removed in disk part afterwards. The boot wait time can be changed in the advanced system settings under startup and recovery. Now the PC can be started normally again.
For more details and additional articles visit my website libe.net, subscribe to this channel for more and leave me a thumb. Thanks a lot and see you next time.